I'm driving at 50 miles an hour, and if I need to make an emergency stop, the highway code dictates that I need a total distance of 53 meters. That's 38 meters of braking distance and 15 meters of thinking distance. And if traffic builds up and I slow down, my stopping distance obviously falls. The faster I'm going, the larger the space in front needs to be. And if I slow down, that space gets smaller. We could increase capacity on the railways by getting trains to follow these principles too. It's essentially like turning a fixed block system into a moving block, and that's going to make all the difference. So how would you make it work? Well, you'd need to know everything about the train in front, how fast it was moving and its position. And if you knew your speed and your position, you could then calculate how close you could travel behind the first train safely. Simple, in theory. And it's exactly what they do here at the Docklands Light Railway in East London. Each train's exact position is worked out using wires laid out along the track. These wires transmit signals to and from the trains. The loops of cable cross over every 25 metres along the track, and here's one of those points. Now, the train counts the amount of times it travels over one of these cross points, and that's the crucial part of the system. The train can count these cross points because the electrical signal changes direction at each twist. This is the train's onboard computer system, the nerve center of the train. And let me show you what happens when the train passes over one of these crossover points. The current is running in one direction as the train approaches the crossover. At the crossover, it flips 180 degrees, what's called a phase change. This oscilloscope measures the direction of the signal below, and you can see how it flips as the loop passes underneath the train. And it's this that the train registers and counts every time it passes over a crossover. Each pulse identifies the train's position within the 25-metre loop. Then a second system measures how many times each train wheel rotates. Between these two systems, the train position can be tracked down to just a few centimetres. The exact speed and position of each train is relayed back to this control centre and the computer system here then calculates how close to each other the trains can travel safely. That information is then relayed back to the trains so they can move accordingly. Using moving block, the DLR system is able to run more trains closer together than a conventional fixed block system, which means the line capacity can be far greater and it's flexible enough to be able to deal with almost any unexpected occurrence with ease. The police just delayed the train at uh, platform two. You got any idea why that was up? And the system is so safe, it's not only done away with all signals, but there's also no need for onboard drivers. Thanks to all of this technology, Moving Block is going to revolutionise the way our railways will be run in the future, dramatically increasing rail capacity and efficiency.